Amen. We thank God for our adult choir, our musicians doing a wonderful job this morning. God has a blessing with your name on it. I don't know about you, but it shouts me that God has a blessing with my name on it. And what God has for me, it is for me. And what God has for you, it is for you. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we thank you for this worship experience. God, I pray for preaching power to hide me behind the cross of Calvary. God, that you just won't send the anointing that will make this task easy, but make it effective, God. Pray that this word will fall on good ground. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the saints of God said amen. amen. Again, we honor the spirit of the living God to all of these preachers of the gospel, to our fishy boards. Amen. To you, the men and women of God. You that have your Bibles, turn with me to the gospel that is recorded in St. Matthew chapter 5. St. Matthew chapter 5. And while you're looking for that, we thank God for Reverend Holmes. Understand he preached with the anointing and the power of God this morning and blessed the house. I don't know, but I'm thankful that I have associate ministers that could preach the gospel and preach a sound doctrine. Amen. 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 I don't take that for granted. Every pastor can't go away and leave associate ministers, but God has blessed Ruth Fellowship Ministries. Even if you don't say amen, I know I'm blessed, amen, to have them, amen, with me here at Ruth Fellowship Ministries. Amen. St. Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 13, I'm reading from the New International Version of the Scripture. And this is how my Bible reads, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city, a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Thus far, the scripture, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The church has always been important and a stable institution in the lives of people, especially in the black community. The Bible clearly points out that aside from home and family, the church is the most powerful institution on earth for the promotion of the gospel. And the only institution that preaches the gospel of eternal salvation through the blood of Jesus. So it is as we have celebrated and still celebrating 15 years of being kept by God. We must not uh, think it is a time to take a break, but we must keep it moving. So that's what I want to talk about this morning, keep it moving. There's much work that still needs to be done. And when you think about it, God has been good to us. And we've been here for 15 years and we have over 25 ministries, four choirs. God has been good. But it's not a time to take a break. It's not a time to become comfortable. We've got to keep it moving. Look with me at the history and the work of the church. Reverend Melvin Wade says in a proclamation, he says, For almost 20 centuries, the church has stood, survived, and weathered every storm and high tide blown by adverse winds without sinking. The church has stood the test of the ages without a single complaint. The church has persevered in the face of still opposition. The church has proven everyone false who predicted that it would fail. What is the church? I'm glad you asked. There are many yeah, answers to the question. You hear me say often that the church is the bride of Christ. For we are prepared to be united with the bridegroom. The church, it is the ransom of the Lord. For we have been brought with a price. Are you walking with me this morning? 
The church is the blood-brought crowd, a born-again crowd. The church is the called-out crowd, God's holy family, a royal priesthood. The church is the company of the saved and the company of the justified ones. The church, I tell you, it is the congregation of the redeemed, the company of God's, yeah, peculiar people, and a congregation of baptized believers. And this takes us to the text here in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus describes his disciples as the salt of the earth. In other words, you ought to be a good Christian example to the world. But if you stop walking in the Christian faith, you lose your effectiveness. If you stop seeking the Lord and think being in his presence is no longer important, it is then that you lose your way. Help me, a Holy Ghost. Not only will you lose your way, but you will also cause more confusion among unbelievers, causing them to not want to be a part of the church because they see you wavering between two opinions. Oh, one foot in the world and one foot in the church. On this 15th anniversary celebrating this year, it's time, yeah, to stop playing church. It's later than you think that's why Jesus tells us in his word to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father that is in heaven so it is so it is as the church our job is to live the life that glorifies God not just privately but also publicly he said let your light shine before mankind that they may see see your good works I tell you the church is responsible for holding up the blood stained banner and we gotta hold it up not just when we feel like it but we gotta hold it up until we die Holy Ghost what concerns me about the church is there are times when it's hard to distinguish between those who are part of the church and those who are not the job of the church is to influence the world, not the opposite. Help me, Holy Ghost. As a child of the king, you must remember who you are and whose you are. The word of God tells us in Romans 12 and 2, to be ye not conformed to this world, but to be ye transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. That you may do what? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, I tell you, the world is looking to the church and they're asking the question this morning, is there any word from the Lord? Is there any word from my hurting, broken heart? Is there any word? I'm on the edge. Is there any word? I'm about to lose my mind up in here, up in here. Is there any word from the Lord? The, ch the world is looking at the church and they want an answer. And you got to be able to tell them that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Help me, Holy Ghost. The world, the world is looking to the church for hope. However, if you the church are if we're doing the same things that the world are doing, if, 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 I, if we don't have any hope, if, if the preacher, help me Holy Ghost, uh, can't live what they're preaching about, if the choir is not living what they are singing about, if the deacon is praying without faith, if the saints of God are testifying but not standing on the promise of God, uh, what hope does the world have? As the church, you must stop giving the gospel to people and then taking it back by the way you live. When you do this, you do the gospel of Jesus Christ a disservice. The world should know the church as the Lord's host, not as a bunch of fighters among ourselves. It's a sad thing when the church folk can't get along, when the church folk are jealous of each other we've been here for 15 years. it's time to get better it's time to move on ah uh, some of you are still on milk you should be on meat by now the world should know us 
as soldiers of the cross. Not as church splitters and preacher killers. The world should know us as ambassadors for Christ. Not Bible toting phonies. Not as people who major in minors and minor in majors. You got to understand when I major in minors, I spend more time worrying about who's going to lead the song rather than how the song should lead me. I spend more time worrying about the pastor's friends rather than having a friend in Jesus. I spend more time worrying about if my name is on the program rather than just being glad to be in the service one more time. Uh, when I minor in majors, I neglect Bible study and prayer meeting. When I minor in majors, uh, I won't pay my tithes, but I'll pay $20 for some lottery tickets. Uh, I'm talking about when you're minor in majors. Uh, I tell you, there's a lot of people in the world looking for an excuse not to be a part of the church and are simply looking for a reason to tear the church apart. Help me, Holy Ghost. You got to let your light shine. These are the last days. Jesus is soon to come. The world is looking for an excuse not to be a part of the church. They, they'll say that some so-called uh, church members are doing the same things that the world are doing, going the same places that the world is going and using the same language that the world uses. It seems to be, I tell you, open season on church bashing. But don't give them a reason. The local church is not perfect. There are concerns and issues that the church is confronted with on a daily basis. But nevertheless, in spite of the church being under attack and daily scrutinized, we still got to keep it moving. Look at your neighbor and say, keep it moving. Uh, in spite of all the criticism regarding the church, the church will not fail the church will not fall in spite of the sarcasm in spite of the put downs of the church the church will not go away the church is here to stay why because Jesus said that upon this rock I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it it didn't say the gates of hell will not rise up but the gates of hell will not prevail look at your neighbor and say the church is here to stay until the rapture we gotta keep it moving we gotta keep it moving I'm almost finished. Let me, let me properly exegete this text. We got to keep it moving. We got to keep it moving. We got to keep it moving. Watch this. Watch this. Out of all the institutions in the entire world, the only institution that Jesus died for, it was the church. And the only institution that Jesus is coming back for, it is the church. Let the church say amen. People can say what they want about the church. That's all right. We still got to keep it moving. In the book of Revelation, John instructed by Jesus, uh, he writes to the church at Philadelphia. And this is what John writes to the church of Philadelphia. He says, I know thy works. He says, behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For, the, for those, yeah, yeah, yeah. For those, yeah, that have uh, struggled and have kept the doors open, they have a little strength. Uh, and, and the reason they have a little strength is because they have kept my word. <clears throat> And they have not denied my name. So I declare to you today that all you need to make it on this journey, uh, it's just a little strength. Look at your neighbor and say, you just need a little strength. I tell you, there are some churches that God is using today in a mighty way. Because they have a little strength. It's not about the size of your membership. It's not about having a hundred voice choir. It's not about building great cathedrals. God has not called us to be successful in packing the church and raising hundreds of thousands of dollars. He has called us in these last days to be faithful, to simply say,
say as a church, uh, for God I'll live uh, and for God I'll die. Uh, that I'll let nothing uh, separate me from the love of God. Uh, uh, to simply as a church, uh, we are called to help somebody. Uh, is a shame uh, if you're a church in the community uh, and nobody knows that you're there. Uh, it's a shame that if you are a church in the community uh, and your doors are closed uh, and nobody miss you. Uh, that's the sad state of the church. Uh, but we got to be a church uh, that our light is shining. Uh, we got to be a church uh, that's praying for the sick. Uh, we got to be a church uh, that's sensitive uh, to the needs of others. Uh, we got to be a church uh, that will help somebody uh, on this way. Uh, we got to be a church uh, in these last days uh, that will take a stand uh, and call sin a sin. Uh, we got to be a church uh, in these last days uh, that when people come uh, into these four consecrated walls uh, that we're not looking down on them. Uh, that we're not, yeah, uh, criticizing them uh, because their pants are hanging off their butt. Uh, we're not criticizing them uh, because they're scared is too short but we're loving them to Jesus we're loving them to Jesus we're putting our arms around them and we're showing them the love of Christ and if you love them to Jesus they get a belt for their pants if you love them to Jesus 